Welcome back to the UFC Pros Pick Show. I am James Lynch. He is Nick Kalikas. And of course, we've got the star of the show, James Krause here. Uh, before we get into talking about UFC 271, got to mention the promo we got going on with BetDSI. Use the code word UFC. And not only to get a signed photo of James Krause, you get the match deposit bonus, a lot of incentive to sign up for BetDSI. That's the odds we're going to be using here today. And also make sure you check out Nick on UFC on the line, UFC Fight Pass. That's where you're going to find all of Nick's bets. Today, we're going to, we'll be talking some bets, but Nick will obviously be giving out his main plays on that show so keep that in mind as well uh guys we got to recap last week real quick here uh we we did some good and we did some bad here let's talk about the good uh first gonna start on a, on a positive note here you called shitty and jukawani in fact i i messaged you right after that fight happened you called that to a t kraus um you had a couple bets of the week so to be fair you gave some more value let's just pretend you just stuck with that bet with uh, chitty and, and then you're gonna be looking good uh, i know you also had puna soriano who you know close fight and then hey, jason man, Witt as why well. are you bringing yeah. it up well, I, I just, you know, we got, we got to have the good bet. Look, same heat, same here. I had Miles Johns as my bet of the week, and that didn't work out with Hakeem. Hakeem ended up winning, but Miles Johns did not win. Uh, but my my other, my prop play hit with uh, Davis and Stolarenko, the over, uh, parlayed with Shavkat, who looked great, right? He got that knockout. So uh, we're, we're doing well. You know, that that's that's how you got to look at it. The over yeah, overall, the money work has been pretty good. And he was my well, best bet on the uh, UFC show this past weekend, the UFC on the line. So I, I yeah. figured he'd get it done, thankfully. He looked great. He did. He did. And Carlton Harris is, is no slouch. That was a, that was a very good win for him uh, as well. Okay. Let's talk about UFC uh, 271. Awesome main event. We've got the rematch. Finally, Israel Adesanya, Robert Whitaker right now in bet DSI, Israel Adesanya, the favorite at minus 294, the comeback on Robert Whitaker plus 233. Before we get your picks, let's hear from some fighters and see who they're picking in this main event. I don't, yeah, you know, the, this is a, that's a tough one because I, we don't see Whitaker often, you know, it, and so you don't know how good he's going to be or how, or how, how, how many advancements he's made. Um, I think just in general, the Adesanya style that he brings to the, to the fight is going to be really tough for Robert Whitaker to deal with the, just physically with the reach and the, you know, the, the distance management and, and how well Israel just, just shuts people down from the outside. Um, you know, if, if Cyril gone is the heavyweight version of John Jones, uh, Izzy's the 85 version of it, the one, you know, the middleweight version. So, um, he just, he does, he does the same thing. He shuts people down. He, he neutralizes them from the outside and then picks them apart. Um, it's exactly what happened in their first fight. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what Whitaker's team has come up with to kind of, to deal with some of that stuff, because we've seen that backing away and staying away doesn't work. Um, we've seen that, crashing in and trying to close the distance doesn't work. We, that's what happened to Whitaker the first time. It's the same thing that happened to Paulo Costa. Um, you know, I, I would take a lot of things from the Vittori fight if I was Whitaker and try to build up on those and do it better. Um, but I, that's, it's, that's the funnest part to me. And, you know, obviously I don't think Whitaker doesn't have the, the physicality and, and probably the wrestling and top game that Jan Blachowicz does to be successful. So not only do you have to kind of take that, like if I was going to fight Izzy, I would take very, I would be very similar to Blahovich. Like, stay safe, keep the rounds close at the beginning, take a little bit of the heat off. You know, you get him breathing a little bit, making him work. Got to deal with the leg kicks for sure, uh, and you got to get to his body. You know, and you got to. And and honestly, a lot of those takedowns were just because Jan Blahovich was just physically imposing. You know, it, Izzy went to all the right places in the takedown defense stuff. He just. He didn't have enough ass behind him. You know what I mean? He just was the smaller guy. If I had to, if I had to put some money on it, I would put it on Izzy because I think that's the safe bet. But Robert Whitaker is a live dog for sure. I think that uh, it's going to be a lot tougher for uh, Adesanya this time, but uh, uh, I still think that he's going to pull it off. But it's definitely going to be a, a tough fight because I think Whitaker is probably going to use a little bit more wrestling in this in this one. Man, I'm excited about that fight. Uh, I'm sure the, the, the Whitaker is going to come back and and uh, adjust from that last fight and have a lot of momentum. You know, I, I think I think he's definitely going to show up this time. Uh, it, but Adesanya is just you know a, a different breed, man. So I don't know if it ends differently. You know, but but I think throughout the fight the duration of the fight, it'll go differently, but I don't know if it'll be enough to get it done. I think, uh, I would say out of Sanya, but I think Whitaker's coming with some heat. All right. So there you go. Uh, a lot of people liking Izzy in this fight. We'll start with you, Kraus. Uh, who are you liking as far as uh, the main event of UFC 271? Well, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to bet against Izzy. You know what I mean? He's just dominated that division so well. Um, 
at the current price, I'll be honest with you, I don't really like it. Uh, I think it should be somewhere closer to minus 250. Um, and and I think Whitaker's going to do a, I think Whitaker's going to do a much better job this time. I think he's going to do a good job mixing in the takedowns and keeping Izzy guessing. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a fairly competitive fight here. Um, all that being said, it's really difficult to bet against Izzy just because he's done so well. You know, he's, he's knocked with a crowd early already. He's beat, you know, the, the who's who in that division. And uh, so it's really tough to bet against him, obviously. But there's been a blueprint laid on how to beat him now. Uh, and that's happened since, uh, since after their first fight. And I don't feel like there's been a lot of people that have been able to do that. I do feel like Whitaker has the tools to mix those takedowns in. And I think he's going to, just by what I'm listening to in interviews, he, he keeps saying he's going to mix it up. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you're just striking with somebody, the only other aspect of this is just to grapple more, right? So he's going to mix it up. I know he's going to wrestle, right? He's going to he's gonna have to wrestle to beat Izzy because he's not going to strike with him. So I, I am going to take Izzy to win. I do, however, think this is going to be a much more competitive fight. And I would not be shocked if Whitaker pulled out a win. So – Take that for huh. what you will. It's it's tough to bet against Izzy, but I wouldn't be shocked. I'm not I'm not playing Whitaker. I wouldn't be shocked at all, though. Nick, what have you seen in terms of the line movement here? I know Izzy opened as the favorite. It seems like the line's only going up. And this is something, actually, if you remember our show from a few weeks ago, our future odds show, we spoke about this, about you know the Adesanya fans really coming in on this fight. What have you noticed on the line movement? Yeah, it's been pretty steady as of late, though. There has been early action on the Adesanya side. Of course, it's not surprising. A lot of people are going to throw them into parlays as well. But as far as the sports books go, there hasn't been any significant straight action as of yet because I think a lot of people agree with what Krause just said. This line is a very difficult one to bet. In fact, James, you sound, James Krause, you sound a lot like I did on the UFC on the line show. So quick plug right there. Make sure you check it out because we agree a lot for what, almost exactly what you just said. I broke down on the UFC show as well. So I do believe that. I think it's probably going to be a different fight. And again, I think where the price is right now is so difficult to bet that people are kind of hesitating. Yeah, and uh, just to give my pick on this, uh, I, I I like Adesanya in this fight, but I completely agree with Kraus. This is going to be a much different fight. It actually annoys me that people reference that fight so much because it's going to be totally different, a lot of different circumstances. Uh, that's something we talked about on the Future Odd Show a few weeks ago about how you know Whitaker was dealing with a lot going into that first fight. He's proven himself since then. Three straight wins over really solid opposition heading into this fight. Uh, I spoke to Whitaker ahead of this fight. Uh, you know, obviously asked him about the wrestling. He says basically, you know, if it presents itself, he will use it. But you got to think that's in the back of his head, seeing what Jan Blahovich was able to do. Although Jan Blahovich, a pretty big light heavyweight, I think the size definitely played a role in that as well. But I think what it comes down to is that Adesanya, I think, is just a little bit better in the striking department. And I think, you know, Whitaker can absolutely crack him, but I think Adesanya is going to be a little bit too fast. He's got the, uh, you know, obviously the size as well, too. I think it's going to be very interesting in this fight to see the type of adjustments that it makes. I think this is going to look closer to the Calvin Gassim fight with Adesanya, where I think Whitaker is going to push him a bit in this one. But I ultimately do see Adesanya getting it done. The question I have, are we going to see a finish here? I don't know if we will. I think this could go the distance uh, in the fight because of the fact that Whitaker, extremely tough to put away, just the one uh, stoppage loss, well, only loss he's had at middleweight. And then, uh, you know, you can't count the welterweight fights, completely different fighter, in my opinion, um, you know, in terms of that. And then with Adesanya as well, we haven't really seen that uh, armor sort of uh, any weakness in the armor there. So I'm going to go Adesanya, but like Krause said, I don't know if there's a ton of value just betting him straight in this one. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of uh, Whitaker, I, I, I think Whitaker is probably the second best middleweight in that division, but I don't think that'll be enough to defeat Israel Adesanya. Let's get to the co-main event. It would it wouldn't be a uh, it wouldn't be a card in Houston if Derek Lewis was not on the card. Of course, he's the co-main event taking on Tai Tuavasa. And right now, Derek Lewis minus 182, the comeback on Tuavasa plus 155. <laughs> Nick, uh, anything you've seen on the line movement? Again, Lewis one of these are two popular guys, so I could see money coming in both ways. Absolutely. Two of the most popular heavyweights on the roster for sure by far, right? So I like this fight a lot. I love the matchmaking. I mean, now Derek Lewis is kind of becoming that Andre Vlaski type of fighter, meaning the gatekeeper role, right? If you get past Derek Lewis, you're probably in pretty good shape as far as the title shot goes in the future. But this is a tough spot for Tui Vasa to come in here and pick off Lewis. So a little bit of the early action has come in on Derek Lewis. He is now a larger favorite here, and we are seeing some sharp bites on that side as well. So it seems like Lewis should be the side here, but it should be a fun fight, no doubt. Kraus, which way are you leaning in the co-main event? I, I mean, I'll be honest. When this fight was announced, I, I think they're the same guy. I don't, I don't quite understand. Like, I feel like an idiot here, but I'm like, I need somebody to explain to me where the value is on Derek Lewis. You know what I mean? Like, to me, they're the same fighter. Like, I thought this would be closer to a pickup fight, and I, I do think Derek Lewis's uh, uh, quality of opponent is a little bit better, strength of schedule. But I, to me, they're the same exact fighter. I don't, I don't quite understand. Like somebody, I need somebody to explain to me how Derek Lewis is almost a two to one favorite here. I don't, I don't quite see it. Uh, 
and I'm not saying he's not going to win. I'm just saying I thought this would be more of a coin flip fight, more of a pick him uh, on the odds. But I don't, I don't quite see where Derek is a two to one. I mean, maybe you guys can help me out. I don't know. I feel kind of dumb for saying this, but like, I just don't see where Derek Lewis is almost a two to one favorite. I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Well, who are you picking though? That, that's the question. Are you going with Lewis or are you going with Tuavasa? <laughs> I'm going with Derek Lewis. <laughs> okay. Well, there I you got, go. There you go. I, I understand think, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll tell I'll you why Lewis schedule, Lewis is you know? the favorite, and, and one of the reasons I actually really like him in this fight, uh, sorry to interrupt you there, uh, it is the level of opposition. Two of us has defeated Stefan Struve, who's retired, Harry Hunsucker, who's a borderline UFC fighter, Greg Hardy, who might very well be out of the way out of the UFC, and Augusto Sakai. Sakai's probably the best win he's had uh, over good. the last one. He is, well, but, two, but Sakai's been but Sakai's been knocked out before too. It's not anything new, like in terms of him getting finished. Even Rosenstrike, and and I know it's heavyweight. I know, trust me. Yeah. Like I mean, these guys do get knocked out a lot. But you look at who Lewis has beat. Curtis Blades is a really good win in that weight class. I mean, on paper, Blades had a lot of advantages uh, in terms of the wrestling and some other things. Um, you know, Cyril Gone. I mean, that's just a tricky puzzle to figure out. I mean, Gone is just a a much more athletic uh, heavyweight. There's there's not really anyone like Cyril Gone in the weight class. And and you look at some of the wins he's got, knocking out Volkov. I know at the last minute but that you know last second i should say that's still a good win under under the resume too i just think it's not only the quality of opposition but it's just the fact that i think lewis and naganu hit harder than anyone in that weight class i know tuvasa hits like a truck too but i think that knockout threat you know chris Dawkins. we talked about that fight i thought Dawkins was going to win that one he didn't i'm not going to make the same mistake here i think with i know it's only three rounds but i still think lewis is going to connect at some point and i think he's going to knock out tuvasa and let's not forget either tuvasa was this close to getting released from the ufc a few years ago he's on a three fight losing streak the winning streak's incredible i think he's a great personality but i think people are forgetting you think he's gonna fighting. finish i think he's gonna finish two of us i do within three rounds yeah now you sound really? like i did on the ufc show james Lynch. there we go okay to God. so so far both <laughs> breakdowns are very comparable to my opinion on the, okay. the ufc fight pass on the line i swear to god yeah. so, I'm, so really, I'm really indifferent on this i i really am like when i look at it like i i see the quality of opposition but dude volkov was beating the dog hell out of him before he got clipped. So like, I know that's a win. You got to take that and you put it, but like, if you look at 24 and a half minutes or 14 and a half minutes or whatever, he was getting, he was going to lose a decision. A hundred percent. Yeah, But yeah. so would Tui Vasa. He was I getting, mean, Tui Vasa's yeah, not beating getting, Volkov, right? Yeah. For yeah. sure. Agreed. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. To me, they're the same. They're the same guy. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and blades, bl blades, I'll get, I'll give you the blades one. You know, I'll give you the blades yeah. one. Uh, that, that's a, that's a big win. Uh, but I, I just don't uh, – to me, they're the same exact fighter. I thought that this would be more of a pick -em. That You're right. Derek Lewis has a much better strength of schedule. I don't I – don't, I'm still indifferent on it. Like, I guess I'll pick Derek Lewis. I, I, I do think we're going to see action come back on Tui Basa here because he is such a popular fighter. And like yeah. what Krauss just said, I think a lot of people are going to believe that as well. I think a lot of people are going to side with you on this, Krauss, and think that they are very similar fighters. So why not take a stab at the dog here? That's what's going to make this intriguing for sure. Yeah, I, I, one of the things about Derek Lewis is I just don't trust his volume. You know, and both of them, both of them, they're, yeah. they're the same. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think this is going to be way more competitive than you guys think. I really do. Okay, I, I really it, do. Yeah, probably will until maybe it doesn't. You know what I mean? It might be one of those spots where it'd be competitive, and then somebody lands one of those bombs, and it's probably over. I would think. I was just, I think part of it too is I was just so impressed with his win over Dawkins in the last fight. Like Dawkins is a young, athletic, like heavy, like maybe not athletic, but like a, he's, 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 he's doing a lot of damage in that weight class. And for him to finish him in the first round, that was really impressive. So to me, it's like Lewis has still got it. Cause there was that thought too, where it's like, is he, no you doubt. know, kind of, no doubt. Is, 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 is the gone fight? Was that a sign of, the, of a decline? Yeah. It certainly didn't look like that in the last fight. Right. All he has to do is land once. I, that, that's, that's how I see it. I think Ty would have done the same thing to him. Interesting. I would pick Dawkins over Ty. So there were different there. So maybe that maybe that's the difference. But you picked so, Dawkins over Lewis, though. Uh, I did. I did. That's true. So, but I learned my lesson. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to bet against Lewis uh, anymore unless he's fighting uh, Naganu or any of these other guys. Um, okay. Let's get to our prop bet of the week. Uh, fight we didn't talk about, obviously, because we're only talking about the main and co main is the Carlos Olberg and Fabio Charant fight. Uh, Olberg, obviously, a teammate of uh, Adesanya uh, heading into this one. Uh, these guys are strikers. They're going to go out there. They're probably going to throw some leather. I normally don't play unders, but I think this is a case where it could happen. Charant's been finished a few times. Uh, Olberg, uh, you know, again, is, is not, doesn't want to have happen what happened in his last fight where he got finished so i think someone's going out on their shield here i, I don't want to pick who it is so i'm going to take the under which right now is minus 135 and you know you know me i like getting that plus money i don't want to just play it straight up so i'm parlaying that with andre arlovsky Arlovsky, for whatever reason, I don't know why, is still getting it done. Like he's still winning like these fights that that I think he shouldn't, and he's still doing it. And I think Jared Bandera, 
nicest guy ever. I just don't know if he's necessarily UFC caliber. He's had the one good win over Taffa outside of that. He hasn't looked that great. And I think Arlovsky probably beats him here. So if you parlay those two together, you, it comes out to about plus 194. A lot of value there with those two. It could be someone else on the card, but I'm going Arlovsky and the under in that fight. Uh, your thoughts on that, Krause, and what's your uh, prop bet of the week? Well, I'm going to co-sign on the uh, I'm going to co-sign on the Andre Arlovsky uh, play. That's that's a that's a play that I really really like. Uh, I, I, I honestly I like that parlay a lot. I'm big on Oberg. I think he's actually going to win. I wouldn't be afraid to bet that straight up. But I I'm definitely co-signing on the uh, on the Andre Arlovsky play. Uh, I'm going to go a little little chalkier for you guys know me. Uh, but I like the over in Bobby Green uh, Nazar Hapkris. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to play that straight up. But I, if you guys want to get the value. I like uh, I like I like Bobby Green in that fight. I like Andre Avlovsky. I like that play. Uh, and you could parlay those with some of the other uh, big favorites on the card too, if you want to cheat some value down. Yeah, the only reason I looked at that as well, the only reason I didn't think of that is because of what happened to us last time. Remember, he finished Ally Quinta early on, and I was like, never again. Like, yeah. I don't know if I can do that. I know typically he does finish his fights, but, and uh, you're yeah. sorry, he does go the distance, I should say. Um, and then I'm also a bit worried that, you know, Nasrat has been finished a few times. So that's where I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know. Maybe this new Bobby Green is going to go finish him. I don't know. But um, I, I like Green in that fight for sure. Uh, I just, I, I don't know if the overall hit, but uh, again, good line of thinking there because the, the data shows us that Green typically does go the distance so i'm totally with you there okay let's get to our bet of the week kraus i'm keeping it simple here you know i like you know sometimes i'll play dogs i'll go you know different uh you know sort of angles here but i'm just going to keep it simple here i'm going Derek lewis as you guys know i'm high on him and i'm going israel out of sonia i just i know these are two closer fights i i would not be surprised if we're talking next week about a robert whitaker upset and possibly a two of us upset as well but i'm just very high on lewis and in that fight in particular so i like him there at at minus 182 and with out sonia like i said you're not getting much value there but i still think he wins like i still think he's that good I think he's the best middleweight in the world. And I think he closes this chapter with Robert Whitaker. So if you parlay those two together, it comes up to plus 110. I think there's some decent value there. We already know your thoughts on, on the fights, uh, Kraus, but what's your bet of the week? Uh, I, once again, I have a couple that I really like. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I like Bobby Green a lot here. Uh, I like Andre Olaski a lot here. But my bet of the week is going to be Max Grishin. Uh, and the reason why I'm picking him is, is A, at, at 205, the dude is just a monster. He, he probably should be at heavyweight, to be honest with you. And I referenced his fight with Dustin Jacoby, who I rate really high in that division, especially as a striker. And I thought you could have – that decision could have went either way. And D- Dustin is one of my good friends and teammates. Uh, that decision could have went either way. And, uh, and and when I look at William Knight, I think he's – physically, he's amazing. Like, I mean, obviously, just look at him. He's, he's, he's built like a, a Greek god. But uh, I think te- from a technical standpoint, um, I don't think he has what it takes to hang with Grishin. Uh, I think the only way for William Knight to win is a puncher's chance. It is a decent puncher's chance, but anytime you see that puncher's chance, unless there's somebody known for just knocking people out left and right, I don't see him winning a decision against Max Grishin. Uh, I think the length is the length and size is going to be a big problem for him, uh, and I think Grishin is going to is going to decision him, uh, maybe even finish. One more uh, play I wanted to just mention. This won't be an official pick. I almost considered it, but and we talked about this a few weeks ago. Alex Hernandez is an underdog against Moicano. I like that play. In fact, I'll take the knockout prop on that one. Moicano has been finished early a lot. There's a thing. I know two of those uh, knockouts, I believe, were at Featherweight over uh, the Korean Zombie and Jose Aldo, but still, this guy does get knocked out a lot. And with Hernandez, it's it's either, you know, he loses a decision or he wins by knockout. And, and I think we could see the knockout uh, come here on Saturday. So if you can get him at plus yeah. money, I don't think he's going to win a decision. I think he, if anything he wins by knockout so maybe you look at that knockout prop as well as something to sort of keep an eye on but i think i think that's a fight that could really uh, surprise some people so. or the under either way right yeah, the under I mean, yeah the under might not be bad with what you just said i mean i think there's a chance moicano is a finisher as well so either way I, I think there's a possible finish there and the price isn't too bad on the under so maybe look at that Yep. No, very, very good play there as well. Okay. As we uh, wrap things up, uh, make sure you take advantage of the uh, promo code we got going on. Use the promo code UFC on BetDSI. You get a uh, match deposit bonus and you get the signed photo from James Krause. Also, make sure you check out Nick on UFC on the line, UFC Fight Pass. You don't want to miss it. Uh, Nick goes into detail. Him and Johnny the Greek uh, give you everything you need to know for this fight. So obviously you're watching the show first, which is smart. Watch the other show after and then we're all good and uh, you can enjoy the, the bets this weekend. Uh, for myself, for James Krause and Nick Kalikas, thank you so much for watching. We will see you uh, soon, and thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the fights this weekend.